I wanted to tell you the story about the time I served the divorce papers, divorce papers on myself, which was a unique experience for more than one person that day. My wife had sent uh, the papers from Newfoundland, Labrador, actually, where she was teaching at the community college in uh, Happy Valley, Goose Bay. No, it's not very happy in Happy Valley. Okay? So she sent it to my buddy John to save money, she told me. And I called her on the phone and said, what in the name of all that's holy do you think you're doing sending something like that to my best friend without even asking permission. Well, I thought I'd give you money. Would you rather have a bailiff? Fine, it's not going to cost me any money. Send anybody a damn well pleased. But don't ever do such a shitty thing again. John wouldn't talk to me for three days. In succeeding years, he's talked to me for, not talked to me, excuse me, for whole years. John is a, anyway. So John says, what do you want me to do with these papers, David? Do you want me to, uh, says he would have gladly burned them for me if I had asked and I said oh no oh no let's not do that let's do the right thing because if she doesn't want to be tough I wasn't, wasn't quite this but I, in my mind I was thinking if she doesn't want to be married to me then I certainly don't want her to be married to me either but I sat on them for some time I didn't just run right down to the to the law courts and uh, so one day I'm sitting around with John having a few pops and I said to hell with it, it's got to be done. She, I think she must have been pestering me. I'd had them for months. So I went to the wrong court. She sent me to the family court in Dartmouth and it's, it's divorce is a Supreme Court business in Canada. So I had to cross the harbor, took the ferry which was convenient because the ferry terminal in, Her in Halifax is just a, literally a oh, three-minute walk to the law courts. And I, I knew my way around there because I had been, uh, I had worked as a courier uh, for, for a year. And then I went, so I went and I found the prasadary. I said, let's see the prasadary. Now, you got to remember, I'm half slapped. I'm, I'm in that, this guy is a little too happy not to be on something, but it was strictly, it was strictly uh, Irish whiskey. And I'd only had three short ones. I said, I'd like to see the prothotary. She said, oh, that's me. And I said, great, I need to file these divorce papers. And she said, file them on, on whom? And I said, me. And she said, you can't. They, you can't do that. That's, somebody has to file them. And some other clerk, Clark, for you people on the Isle of Wight, speaks up and says, well, why don't you do it? And she said, can I? She said, anybody can except him. So the first honorary is the first clerk. There goes Phil Miller. The first honorary is the first clerk, and she's the one with me. So not only does she serve the papers on me after I prove I myself with my uh, driver's license, she stamps it, and it, it's, it's, I don't know how much it was, but I know I had to pay $3 for the, ta the, the Law Society stamp, which is a little tax the Law Society imposes on everybody that files any kind of legal papers and it makes for a tidy little nest egg for them to pay off for all their other lawyers mistakes and while she's doing all the clerk magic that the wonderful things they do on the other side there that can mystify all of us she says you know this is the first time this has ever happened I've never done anything like this before and I said me too and I said Ain't that just like life? You think you've seen everything? One day somebody walks in with a flying elephant. True story. Got a laugh all the way around. I was I was that kind of drinking, you know. So I went to a postal outlet and I got enough stamps to mail the damn thing and put it in a manila envelope, sealed it all up. Dropped it in the first mailbox on my way to Bearley's, the pub, where I drank, I drank rye whiskey with beer on the side. I had a couple of those. Then I got on the bus and I went across town and I filled out an application for a bay card at the bay because I knew I could get 10 minutes of calling time. 
on the telephone. <laughs> And then I went to a payphone, the nearest payphone in the mall, and I called my wife, and who answers the phone but the, the new boyfriend. And he uh, he says, I'd like to speak to my wife, I said. And he said, who would that be? And I said, how many men's wives do you have there? So he puts her on the phone, and I, I tell her all the who right. She immediately suspects me of, ulterior motors. And that was it. Done. That was... She post-dated the date of our separation on the, uh, the forms. They had me born in 1948, eight years before I was born. I mean, it was all messed up. Newfoundland divorce, do it yourself. It's a true story. And I haven't heard from her in 10, I think 11 years we've been separated and I haven't heard from her in 10. I understand she once tried to get a hold of me through my friend John, who wasn't my friend anymore at the time, for reasons only John could tell you. And you would have thought in 11 years she to try more than once. I would have called Betty. Betty's stable, solid. John's living in his car. <laughs> but not even one time. That's human nature, I guess. You move on, you move along, and there's not a day goes by I don't think about her. But that's the problem with my memory. There's probably not a day goes by when I don't think of everybody I've ever known, good or bad. And now I have other people to think about, people that are in my life now. And as important as those people are, the people in your past who are not still in your present, you carry that weight forever. What are you going to do? It's who you are. Who you are now is what you were. I don't know. I don't know if I would recognize myself at 20. Well, I, I'd recognize the place I was living <laughs> and say, oh yeah, I lived here when I was 20. But you understand what I mean. I'm not even the same guy I was six months ago. I'm not even sure who I am now. But I'm doing good, you know. Got a CAT scan coming up. Still reading my big book. That you, the New Jerusalem Bible. I would actually prefer the old one, the first one. But uh, it was a gift. That's a $50 Bible bought 10 years ago. That's a serious Bible. So hi to Poppy, Samantha, hello to all my nutheads, you know who you are, and uh, I'd like to show you something of Phil Miller if I might, oops, wrong way, the house is a mess, oh, there he is, having his nap, that's my spot, anyway, take care of yourselves, watch out for cars. God loves you, and you know I love you, right? Eh?